Today I'm going to be showing you how seller financing works in the real world, right? I want you to forget all that guru stuff everybody teaches you, right? Because that stuff, what that stuff's designed to do is sell courses, sell books. This video, this show, this is going to be about getting a seller finance deal to work on a real property, and we're going to get into it right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I am James Wise. I am your host. For those of you that do not know, I have sold over $200 million worth of real estate and I run the largest investment company of its type in the greater Cleveland area. And today I'm working with an investor named Tim. Tim, you have a unique situation, but it's not necessarily unique to you. I'm sure a lot of people out there watching this are in the same boat. You cannot qualify for residential financing. So you have uh, looked towards seller financing, and we have a seller finance deal on the table that you're interested in making an offer on, but you want my take. So what I'm going to do is get into the numbers, the good, the bad, the pros, the cons, and the reality of your situation as a seller finance buyer right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's dive into the numbers, right? Seller financing, which by the way, folks, if you want access to seller finance deals you go to holtonwise.com you click the property search for sale tab scroll to the bottom click the mls access it's like a little screen says like yo click here for mls access click that son bitch get the mls seller finance real-time mls feed it's 50 bucks you get access to any seller finance deal listed by the freaking 7,000 or so agents in the cleveland market where i'm at right and then you get a to walk across deals like this, 1658 Wood, Cleveland Heights, 44121, listed at 99.9, 89 days on the market. We got a tenant in here. There is a tenant. That tenant is paying $8.95 a month. That is $10,740 a year. After you calculate your fixed and variable expense estimates running a property like this, you're looking at roughly... $3,282.60 a year in net operating income. All right, keep that in mind, okay? Let's just quickly check out the photos, carouse through the pictures, right? Nothing special. This is some photos before they put the tenant in there. Just like a you know, regular lower income, you know, rental. Cleveland Heights, it's a cool, cool little suburb of Cleveland. Uh, by the way, this this looks fairly new. This looks a little older. Uh, this is going to cost $1,000 to replace, and you can expect to do that every 15 years. Uh, this is going to cost about three grand to replace. You can expect to do that every 30 years, right? That's why the chart I gave you where we got that NOI of 32.82. It's got a line item in there for capital expenditures, right? I break that down, average it out for you guys, right? So nothing fancy, just like a regular eight nine hundred $900 rental, okay? That's what this is, okay? Um, the property, yeah, sure, it's cool, it's fine, whatever. No issues with the property, no major red flags. It's just a decent, normal little, like, you know, lower income rental property. Cool. The neighborhood, it's like a CB neighborhood, right? Most of it is B, uh, but this is probably on, like, the lower lower end of the neighborhood of Cleveland Heights, but it's fine, right? So you got no red flags or no issues with the condition of the property, uh, the rent they're getting out of the property, or the neighborhood, right? What we need to talk about is the seller financing and the price point. Now, this property ain't worth $99.9, like not even close. This is like, pro like no, it's not. It's like if you're looking for like an arm's length transaction with no seller financing, this is probably like a $75,000 property, okay? So it's already overpriced by twenty five k, And that's what borrowers need to understand, right? When you're going out there and you're getting seller financing as a borrower, 
you're getting the good end of the stick if all things are equal, right? Like seller financing benefits the buyer way more than it benefits the seller. Most sellers don't want to do seller financing because if I said, hey, man, will you do a job for me? I'm going to pay you $365 right now. Or I'll pay you a dollar a day every day for the rest of the year. What are you going to take, right? Obviously, you want $365 right now, right? I mean, it makes sense, right? It's just not good. Not to mention the seller has to take a flyer on you, dude. There's a cost to foreclosing on your ass if you don't pay off the seller. So they don't get all their money, and they have to take a flyer on you. And if we're folks that are interested in seller financing for one of the most common reasons out there being we can't qualify for residential financing that means you're a bad bet right they already have to take less money up front they have to take a huge risk dealing with that they can't just cut and run and most people trying to get seller financing are a bad bet the banks are like nope we're in the business of issuing loans for profit but we don't want to issue them to you because Based upon everything, all our analytics, all our data, you're a bad bet. We might lose money, right? So in real estate, there's a give take, okay? So for the seller taking all of that initial uh, risk and not getting all their money, what they're trying to do is sell the property at a premium price, which is why they're asking for $99.9. Now, I don't think you should pay $99.9 even though beggars can't be choosers and it'd be very nice for you to get a seller finance deal. The absolute most I think you should pay, and you have to remember, you're still going to be overpaying by about $10,000 if you do this, would be paying $85K. If you paid $85K and you put down 30%, right, because we're trying to get the seller to take fifteen grand off, right? So we can't do something like offer them like no money down. They ain't going to take the fifteen k off, right? So we got to entice them, put a little bit of you know skin in the game here, right? So we want to Try to pick it up for 85. You put down 30%, which is 25 and a half, and you get them to finance the rest at 30 years at 3%. You would be able to eke out a fairly modest 8.3% cash on cash return. Look, you're making like 23 bucks uh, a month on this on average, right? That may or may not get your beak wet, but you have to understand. You have to look in the mirror. You're coming to the table with not a lot, not a lot to offer, right? If you're trying to be successful in this business, you have to look in the mirror and and just give yourself an honest like take like what the fuck do I bring to the table, right? If you're if you're if you're willing to acknowledge your shortcomings and what you do or do not have to bring to the table uh, for the other party, you will do very well in the business. That doesn't mean eventually you won't have a lot to offer. But in this particular situation, you're not a great borrower, right? Okay? So uh, you don't provide, like, extreme safety to the seller, right? Not to mention seller financing will never really provide extreme safety. Of course, the safest thing is to get all the cash now and not have to deal with it, right? So the only thing you could realistically offer to the seller in a situation like this, because there ain't nothing wrong with the property either. It's not like they're like an incredibly distressed seller in a horrible situation and nobody will buy their house, right? Like if they offered it at market value, it's a decent neighborhood. They're getting rental income. It's like a decent asset, right? So the only thing of value you can offer in this situation is to overpay a little bit and take on the property while making a very modest amount of money, right? But that is a freaking $60,000 loan that you wouldn't have otherwise qualified for. So take what is given to you, try to work that deal out, you know, put that in the pocket, man, put that in the toolbox. That's just another little notch on the belt. You ain't getting rich off this property, but dude, just add that bad boy to the portfolio, move it forward, look towards the next deal, keep working on building up the credit score and the income so that you could eventually qualify for that residential financing. And then you'll have even more to bring to the table. And then if you have a bunch of cash, you could possibly get discounts on deals because you can get sellers out quickly, right? But nothing wrong with doing this deal at 85, which is an overpay of, you know, approximately 10K. Uh, but I don't think it would make any sense to overpay uh, by 25k that would just be too much right that'd be stretching it too far thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment